tell him you don't want to talk about it right now. You don't have to get in his face, defuse the situation, prove and show the world your disagreement with Chase Briscoe. I don't care if you call him on the ride home and be like, hey Chase, we can work it out, but I can't have you come up like shaking my hand on pit road. Hey race fans, welcome to another episode of Backseat Drivers. I'm Alex Weaver here in Studio 3, joined by Mamba Smith and Steve Latart. We're going to break down Bristol dirt. If you missed it and you couldn't stay awake last night, you missed a good one on that final lap. Uh, Kyle Busch backed into it too soon? No? All right. Right fair. place, right time. We'll call it that. Tyler Reddick and Chase Briscoe get locked up. And the move that everybody's talking about now on Monday is, um, was it fair or foul, that last corner move? Two dirt racers going for it. So, Steve, guest honor. Uh, man, I hate to do it because I do like Chase Briscoe. I like Tyler Reddick. I think they're exciting race car drivers, but I was not a fan of Briscoe's move. I think this isn't a battle that lasted 15 laps. He did a great job of running Reddick down, but the only chance he had was the last corner, and I don't consider that an aggressive move. I consider that basically a full Hail Mary. He was going to wreck himself if he didn't hit Briscoe. Instead, he wrecked the both of them. For that reason, I don't love the move. I know it's exciting and the fans are going to cheer, but the racing purist in me says, it's okay if you make contact, but I have to see a little more control, Mamba, than just to point it to the bottom 20 miles an hour faster than you should have been going on corner entry. Look, Steve, Steve doesn't like the move. What he really doesn't like is the result. He loves the move. The fan in him loves the move. <laughs> he just hates that it took out the leader in the process. And I'm with you, man. Like, I, Briscoe, he was working that thing so hard to catch up to Reddick. And, you know, like, as a driver, after you put in all that work, you're like, okay, I'm here. I find out the shot, and I got to send it. And he did send it. And you talk about control. Like, he, A, didn't hit him, you know, front bumper to back bumper. And he also really was really sideways trying to, you could see where he was trying to slow it down. And he just kind of, he got into him a little bit and it sent him. And I wish that Reddick just had this much more grip to get back going because he was like trying to just spin in. It was like, it was like I'm like, okay, he's going to be fine. It's going to be like, it's going to be like Petty in that Daytona. Oh, nope, he's not fine. He just got edged out. But you don't hate the move, you hate the result. I feel like he's defending speeding. You were speeding. Look, he was, he, you're, you're defending a guilty party. He, he wrecked it's, himself. It's racing. This is the guilty no, part. No, we're going for wins here. No, I don't, like wins. don't like it. Well, Tyler Reddick did say in his post-race interview, which we will talk about the niceness of that interview here uh, in a second, but <clears> he did say he didn't do everything right. So I always ask this question when we have analysts here on the back seat. Did he let it slip away or did... I guess Kyle Busch get the win on his own. So, Steve, did he let it slip away, or was it just a product of dirt racing? Uh, just a product of racing. Listen, I think Tyler Reddick's going to be hard on himself, and that's what great race car drivers do. They always look internally on what they can do different to change the outcome. And, and he did – I mean, he didn't drive perfect. No one drives perfect laps. He's being too hard on himself. I don't think Reddick did anything wrong. He put a great race together, and it was taken away from him by a move from coming from behind and, and Chase Briscoe. And then, listen, I'm also not going to take anything away from Kyle Busch because – it is a race, and, and people don't want to hear this, but they only give the trophy at the start-finish line. Um, it can be rain-shortened. It can be a wreck on the last lap. It can be a mechanical issue. It doesn't matter. Kyle Busch did what he had to do to be in position. I think he was a little surprised as well, but he earned the win. He did what he needed to do, and I don't think um, Reddick's going to be hard on himself, but I have no issue with what Reddick did. No, I mean, I, I think Tyler, did he give it away? Like, no, he didn't give it away. He, he did what he was supposed to do I think he's probably hard on himself because I feel like we're used to seeing Tyler really hang it out mm -hmm. right and the aggressor last night was Chase Briscoe he was the one hanging out Tyler was probably not trying to put a step over the line and put himself in the wall in a bad situation he doesn't have a win yet Briscoe has a win already and even at, at the stage when he almost won in the rain on the second or third time it was he was like yeah, you know, if it works out right now, we win this race, I, I love it. But if not, you know, on this day, on Easter, there's other things that are important too. And so he was in a different mindset and really, and so, you know, I, I hate it for Tyler. I was gutted for him because I've been pulling for him on this show for like four times I picked him to win already. And I was like, oh, I didn't pick him, but he's going to win. Not quite. Mm, well, I picked him. I was robbed. With a capital <laughs> R. Robbed. You mad about uh, it? I wanted the eight in victory lane so bad just so I could look like a genius. Uh, well, uh, Tyler Reddick led a career high 99 laps. It was his fourth runner-up finish. So a win 
more than likely is coming. When you're in the right position enough times, you're going to get into victory lane. However, I thought there might have been some fists thrown last night. There was not. At least some, some harsh words, maybe a little, a little coaching, uh, aggressively speaking to, but we got a handshake at the end of it. So, Mamba, were you surprised? I know that they're friends off of the racetrack, but really? The, the, friend, the friend thing off the racetrack uh, and the friend thing on the racetrack, I, I don't really love. <laughs> like, like, I, like, yeah, friends off the racetrack for sure. And, and like in certain situations, it's people you trust on the racetrack to race hard with and do certain things with. But I said it before, like, the eight can't expect the 14 to put bread on his table, vice versa, right? You got to be out for yourself. And I love Tyler and I love Chase. They're both really good dudes. And Tyler is, he's made mistakes before and he's really hard on himself. So as Steve said earlier, he was really looking internally to why he didn't win that race. Like, he's taking it all on his shoulders. But if I was him, and Chase is bebopping up, like, Chase... Smiling. Chase kind of looked like a wounded puppy. Like, he was expecting to get a little tongue lashing, and Tyler's like, hey, man, it's racing. And I'm like, I think for me, I would have, like, given him a little bit something. more of it, a little yeah. something, and then let you off the hook later when we can talk about it. But also for my guys, like, being a crew guy... And you're, you've been digging on trying to win your first race and that organization is out and welcome and all this stuff. And your guy doesn't quite, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't peacock a little bit. <laughs> ah, ah. So, look, I don't want to see fists. I no. said a week ago I didn't like fighting on pit road. But, to your point, part of being a race car driver is not just what you do on the racetrack. It's what you do off the racetrack. Tyler Reddick is a phenomenal talent and he's gonna have a great career, but I wanted to see a little bit of showmanship. So my point is, even if he was okay with Briscoe, look at the crew members in the background. They're not okay. So I'm fine, to your point, tell him you don't wanna talk about it right now. You don't have to get in his face, diffuse the situation, prove and show the world your disagreement with Chase Briscoe. I don't care if you call him on the ride home and be like, hey Chase, we can work it out, but I can't have you come up like shaking my hand on pit road. So I do believe that Chase Briscoe went down there looking for perhaps an argument, not that he wanted to, but he wanted to defuse it right away, which I appreciate. I think Tyler Reddick could have done a better job by his crew, his owner, his sponsors, his fans, showing some disagreement with Chase Briscoe, even if it was a bit of a show, right? I don't want you to not be who you are, right. but it's okay standing up for yourself. Um, like I said, it doesn't have to be aggressive, but you could just simply say, listen, we're not talking right now. This Go back to your car. We're, we're done having this conversation. Even, like I said, even if you call him on Monday and have a different conversation, you want those guys standing behind you, the men and women at RCR that continue to put great race cars together, to think, this is our general. This is who's taking us into battle. This is the guy I'm going to support. And, man, I saw some mad crew members and a smiling driver. Yeah, I mean, it reminds me of two different situations, right? One with, one with Dale Jr. and Kyle Busch. And Dale talked about it on his show where he's like, I felt like I had to get Kyle back because I felt like I was letting everybody down. And then the other one is kind of with Hemrick and Gregson. Like, they had that altercation in Atlanta, and then Martinsburg comes around, and Hemrick could have kept the nine out of the playoffs, and he didn't. And you're like, but then he took it back at Phoenix. So I think Tyler might have a little bit of pressure to uh, – to, <laughs> to, to kind of posture a little bit more on the next go around. Hmm. Well, I can tell you one guy who was not happy, and that was Richard Childress. I was waiting for him to come in and at least say something. Give it, give it. Give it. Out. He's <laughs> <good>. <laughs> up the line. Hold, hold my give ring. A strong, yeah. a strong talking to the boys. All right. Well, Kyle Busch ultimately was uh, the one who paid off at Bristol Dirt. He gets his first win of the 2022 season. It's the eighth driver to win the season. Steve Letard, I'm keeping count. We want 16 by the end of this thing. We just need eight more. Come on, guys. Uh, but he. Close. Gets his 60th career win in the NASCAR Cup Series for KFB and walks away feeling like Earnhardt, guys. He <laughs> felt just like Earnhardt. Uh, will this jumpstart Kyle Busch's season and go on a win streak for the 18? Well, first of all, I don't think Kyle Busch ever needs a jump start. I do think you don't want to kind of awake a sleeping giant. Kyle Busch is so talented. You don't want any sort of momentum going his way. Uh, I think where it really matters for Kyle Busch uh, and this is, we haven't had this conversation, but watching it a few years ago, how long into the season it took him to get the win. His win streak is, I think, 17 or 18 years. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And he should be proud of that. Winning every year for 18 years is mind-blowing. 
to think about the different cars, the competitors, the different series, or excuse me, schedules. Just, I mean, what he does is very impressive every year. So I do think since that's behind him, I'm not going to call it a jump start, but I think now he knows he's in the playoffs. He'll be racing for a championship with 10 races to go. Um, you know, I don't think you want to take a, a champion, a multi-time champion, and kind of take the pressure of winning off. And, right. and I, I, you know, maybe there wasn't any pressure, but I think now that he has won, there's really no pressure, which can make him a little bit more dangerous. Look, a jump start, I don't know. Does Cobbush ever really need, I mean, he's pretty fired up all the time. I'm not sure he needs a jump start. Yeah, he, he, Latari said he was riding him all the way to Phoenix. He was riding the 18. Oh, wait, wait, and now he's in the playoffs. And now he's in the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. To go with her 13 wins this year, it's going to be perfect. 13 winners. I, I'm just, I, I thought K, KFB was going to have a great year, and he it didn't really start that way, but all of a sudden the Toyotas now are looking a little more racy. And he's, he's got to win, and he's been running well. It's not like he hasn't been running. He's been running terrible. He's been the flagship car for that organization, I think, all year, to be honest. So to jumpstart it, no, but I think it's gonna, he's going to have that swagger back. He's going to be a little bit more loose. He's not... He's not gonna be all grumpy. KFB is gonna be rowdy again. He's been a little. He's been a little edgy here lately, <laughs> but also he's been running a lot of dirt races and having fun with Brexton, and that that all plays a part, right? Like what you do away plays a part to your mindset when you're there. And and every time that little boy comes up to his car and comes up to Kyle, you just see Kyle light up. And I think now that he's won, he's gonna be like, all right, I'm back. I'm good. Let's go. Well, a baby girl on the way for the bushes, too, so it'll uh, complete the fam there. But let's get into the rapid response powered by 5-Hour Energy. These are going to be fun. Was this the best finish of the season? Oh, yeah, you were, you're going to throw it to me first yeah. on that one? Mm -hmm. uh, Coda was really awesome. Yeah, no, okay. it wasn't. It wasn't Not okay. even close. Have we forgot the Daytona 500, the biggest race of the year, the Super Bowl of auto racing, a green, white checkered? I know your man didn't win it. It hurt your feelings. <laughs> but it, like, like, so uh, listen, I'm, was I'm it a great unsolved. finish? Absolutely. Yeah. Are we going to see highlights of it? For sure, right? But this is the fact that we can even have a discussion just proves what kind of season we've had. It's been a great year. There's a stack of them. It was a great finish. I'll give it that. Great, greatest of the year? No. Nope. Yeah. Nope. 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 500 was also my favorite. Coda was oh, pretty good. Weird, because your guy did win. Yeah, yeah I weird. did pick the two. Yeah, but okay. uh, anyways, all right. Is Briscoe a championship four contender? Already has one win on the season from Phoenix. Could have had another one last night if things were different. Uh, is he a championship four contender? He will be in his career, but not this year. I mean, Chase Briscoe's obviously very talented. He proved it in the Xfinity Series. He has learned and found some confidence in the Cup Series, plus matching up either with the new car or SHR. I don't think any of us know exactly what it is yeah. this year, but he is – you know, a mark improvement off what we saw last year. But championship four, listen, there's some titans in this sport that he's going to have to root out of the way. If he can do that in the playoffs, you know what? I'll buy him a drink. Congratulations. He proved it to me. But right now, I'm not ready to call him a championship four contender. Oh, no. wow. if, he, if he makes it a final four, Steve's going to buy him a drink. He ain't going to take the drink because Chase Briscoe don't drink. Trust me, I know because oh. I try to party with my man after <laughs> the win, okay? No, so I think, is, is he a final four? He's really starting to push it. He's really, he's really showing a lot of speed and a lot of poise. Uh, you got to elite eight. I'll give him, I'll give him eight. But four, when it gets down to getting to that final four, you really, you're, you're against the best of the best to strap up. And uh, it's hard to say that he would be in that category. I mean, you got to eliminate a lot of impressive names. A lot of talent. Names. A lot yeah. of names. This is not on here, but uh, the four or the fourteen, who has a more successful year when it's all said and done? 14 I think I think I think Kevin's gonna I think Kevin's gonna get his um, but I think the 14 is is you have the four winning this year yeah okay. yeah the four winning this year for I sure. have them both in the playoffs going yeah. out about the same round it's a great comparison I think um, you know it's it's that's crazy to say that that's a hard decision to make yeah. I think it's gonna be pretty pretty you know equal um, listen it's hard to answer that question because we less, just left dirt, which Kevin Harvick <laughs> said from the first lap. <laughs> he did not. I am just going to try to finish this weekend, and unfortunately he got into a wreck. <laughs> he even, yeah, he didn't even get to so, do that. So, like, you know, listen, Kevin Harvick's still Kevin Harvick. I'm going I'm to tip my hat to Kevin Harvick, um, but, but it's going to be a good battle. Yeah. All right. Uh, who gets a win first this season? The aide of Tyler Reddick, who was so close but no cigar on Sunday night at Bristol Dirt, or Joey Logano, who is currently in his longest winless streak at Team Penske? 
You know, I, I never, same thing. I would have never thought this would be a tough decision. I'm going to go Joey Logano just because we are moving through what I think Tyler Reddick's best tracks are. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if it's Reddick, but going to Talladega, going to the tracks that are coming up past, I'm going to go Joey Logano, go the veteran. I'm in a veteran mood for some reason today. Really? I'm, I'm, I'm a young guy, so I'm going with the young guy. Give me, give me Reddick. I, especially after, like, he's been so, I mean, he's been so close almost every week this season. It's got to be coming. It's got to be very, very soon. I think that he's put in more performances that are worthy of a win. Fair. I mean, Logano, everyone forget, Logano did win the Clash, so it's not like, yeah. we're talking about points. So he has a win this yeah. season. Uh, Logano counts the clash. He does. If you ask him, he definitely he counts, counts the clash. it. It's a win. Uh, I cannot tell you my answer because you'll find that later. <laughs> oh, All right. Okay. How will Bubba Wallace do in his return to Talladega the last time that we were in the state of Alabama racing in the NASCAR Cup Series at that super speedway? Bubba Wallace was in victory lane. A pretty emotional first career win for Bubba. So how will he do now making it back to Talladega? Uh, I, I would expect, as always, a 23 to be fast because mm -hmm. they have been fast at super speedways. Oh, so good on super speedways. He's too. good. Freddie Kraft on top of the tower is great. They have been fast, and honestly, like what he did to win at Talladega last year, and it was like, all right, rain's coming, we gotta go, and he 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 went, and he went and won that race. You can say what you want about the rain. He had to put himself in position from like. 20th to get there and he almost won the 500 again this this year so I, I would say he's gonna be fast and up front top five top ten I mean it's Talladega but I go top five assuming okay. it's still rolling what do you say yeah yeah top yeah. five because you got to put that yeah, yeah that's yeah, anybody can wreck at any time <laughs> yeah. uh, so so look when I look at Bubba Wallace and his speedway racing it kind of reminds me of how I think I look at Alex Bowman I don't give him enough credit and yet Bowman continues to win I think when I, Bubba Wallace goes speedway racing I may have overlooked what he had done in the past. And it isn't the win that's impressed me, you know, but he had that great run at Daytona. Then he had a win at Talladega. But then come this year, he's popped back up in the top five a few times and he's been up front. So I have to agree that I think Bubba Wallace is going to be in contention. It's Talladega, though. What I consider contention is if you can get through all the wrecks on the last restart, you're somewhere in the front three or four rows and good luck from there. Uh, but Bubba's done what he needs to do, in my mind, as an analyst for me to say, you know what? He's one that needs to be considered. His, his resume is now good enough, his consistent enough that I think, why would I vote against him? I think Bubba will be right in the mix, assuming all four <laughs> tires are still pointing in the, in the Basically, same direction. if you're coming off a turn two on the last lap, somewhere between second and sixth, you've done a really good job. You've done a really good job. When Dale Jr. and I raced together at all those plate races, our goal was to be in the picture at the trioval. Yeah. And that's <laughs> all you could do. So what I say, See? you have a successful super speedway race mm -hmm. if you were in the framed photo at the end of the race. Mm -hmm. Now I can that's tell it. you, that's good to say, but if you're the first guy, it's more successful. <laughs> yeah, and a lot more sure. fun. For sure. It's a lot more fun. For sure. <laughs> uh, all right, Backseat Bets presented by BetMGM. As we mentioned, we're heading to Talladega. The Boulevard, it's going to be rowdy down there in the state mm. of Alabama. We cannot wait to get back to you guys and have uh, a crazy super speedway race. But first, these head-to-head matchups. Steve was three for four last week. He wasn't on the show, but he claims he was three for four. I had proof. Yeah, okay. He used my NASCAR app. I should <laughs> He did. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's get into these. First up, we have Chase Elliott with uh, that successful Chevrolet team who has managed to stack up those manufacturers pretty hefty when it comes to these super speedways versus Ryan Blaney, who has become quite the showman uh, on super speedways. Blaney. Shocker! <laughs> That's why I went over here first. Fords are more efficient. Blaney gets redemption from his big Daytona 500 disappointment. Blaney goes to victory lane at Talladega. And he's been the man at Talladega here recently, honestly. Hmm. He's won there. He's won. He's won three races there in the last three years, right? Something like that. Just to disagree, the nine Chase Elliott. Why not? Uh, next you'll up. never pick the 12, that's why. <laughs> next up. That's because you Whatever. are enough. You're enough. Whatever. Can't, we can't have double bias. All right, Bubba <laughs> Wallace versus Denny Hamlin, the two uh, Toyotas, teammate versus owner, or I guess driver versus owner on this one. Bubba Wallace, I wouldn't ride in a rental car with Denny Hamlin. I mean, his luck is so bad. <laughs> I mean, this poor guy, I don't know what happened to his car, broke again this weekend. Like, he has made some mistakes. I'm not going to put it all on the team, right? Denny has said, hey, he's made some mistakes, right? He put a great drive in for their win, great strategy, great drive. But other than the win, man, either a mistake or a mechanical or a something. So going to the track where you need a little luck, 
Uh, no, thank you. Denny Hamlin has no luck. I'm going Bubba Wallace. They, I think they've blown two engines. It's, yeah. it's, I'm and I, we haven't seen engines blow in a really long time. Now, one was dirt and one was like shifting or whatever, but like still, uh, Bubba Wallace. That's I mean, if cool. you rode with Denny Hamlin, you'd be broke down the side of 85. Mm. Too soon? Too soon. <laughs> Too soon. If you guys don't know, I broke down on the side of 85 this morning. It's the rain, so we love it. We love Monday mornings. Uh, I'm going to go with Bubba Wallace as well, and I'm going for not only the history on super speedways, but the 23 at Bristol Dirt was my favorite car. I want to die cast immediately. The Columbia looked good. So I will say, if Denny Hamlin finishes, he wins. Because that's kind I of his agree. signature, and he's going to be fast, but I, I, I just finishing is the problem. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think I think it's still Bubba either way. Okay, well... Look for the 11, because we all picked the 23. <laughs> that's what okay, that means. Uh, all right, next up, the former teammates, Brad Kozlowski and Joey Logano. Kez does not have a win. Well, he does. I guess he has the most wins, but he doesn't have a win in the Daytona 500 still. But uh, really good at super speedways. Joey Logano loves the blocks. I don't know who loves the blocks more, Brad Kozlowski or Joey Logano. <laughs> so which one throws the better block on Sunday? Uh, listen, I'm going Brad. <laughs> I think he has no choice. Um, he wants to lead this organization. He's now co-owner to Victory Lane. And I think we have seen a more aggressive Brad. He, he did it down in Daytona in the duels. Um, and I just think that, I don't want to call it desperation because I, I don't think any driver Sense drives with it. Yeah, I think the urgency is there yeah. that he, he just knows, no offense to Logano and Team Penske, but if you said, what's a win mean to these two drivers? It means, you know, Many, many, many multiples more valuable to Brad Kozlowski than Joey Logano in the organization. For that reason, I'm going Brad. Hmm. Yeah. Logano, at Steve Latart. Oh. oh. Let him know. Let him know. Let him hear you. I'm going, I'm going Brad. I'm going Brad. He was really fast at Daytona. His teammate was really fast. They both won their dual races. And to your point, I think he has a lot riding on winning this yeah. year. And they've kind of turned a little bit of a corner. They've shown some, some light at the end of their tunnel. So I'm going Brad. Hmm. Look out, Harrison Burton, for the oh. next. Uh, I'm going to go the 22, Joey Logano. Uh, next up, Chase Briscoe. This is, you guys have a sense of humor, whoever's doing these matches. Chase Briscoe versus Tyler Reddick. You want to go first since you yeah. always just take, I know who he's picking. So. I'm going Tyler Reddick in mm. the eight. I love what I'm seeing from the 14 of Chase Briscoe, but I think when it comes to super speedway racing and maybe... Working together a little bit better. I'm going with the Chevy versus the Ford. That's my reasoning. Mm. That's it. I if this was one on one, if we were asking one on one at the end of the race, I'd go Reddick, especially after the last week, because I don't think he put the 14 <laughs> beat him again one on one. But because of how this is set up, I'm going. Um, I'm going Briscoe for the same reasons you said, except the Fords. I feel like mm. always line up better, and they just seem to have a better system until the very end of the race, where some Fords <laughs> get left out. But we'll, yeah. Let's leave that there, but I yeah, think they're better yeah. together. I'm going racing karma. No reason other than racing karma. Speedway racing is just so difficult. I think both Briscoe and Reddick are going to be just fine as far as talent, as far as commitment, and as far as teammates. I think the racing gods say, you know what? Tyler Reddick, we're sorry it didn't happen on the dirt, so we're going to give you at least a better run than Briscoe down at Talladega. Oh. I'm sure he's going to win, <laughs> but he's going to outrun Briscoe. So we're going to make it. Okay, we're going to make Carmen, it. Carmen, listen, it's like you, they're going to ride the pickup truck together, choose right yeah, there now. They probably will. They'll qualify right next to each other. Oh, happens. All right. Yep. We're keeping track. This is one of those weeks where you really can't throw a dart at the board, so we may be completely wrong, but uh, who knows. Um, all right, well, whether you are War Eagle or Roll Tide, we're heading to the state of Alabama this weekend. The NASCAR Cup Series is going to go green on a super speedway. Man, oh, man, it's going to be so much fun. I cannot wait. It's the second super speedway we've seen with these next-gen cars and this package. So let's dial it in for Talladega. Steve, who is in victory lane on Sunday? I think you could throw balls in the air and probably have just as good a, a guess of trying to pick who's going to be. But I'm going to go um, I'm going to go a Ford. I think it's going to be a Ford, and I actually think – I'm going to have to give it to Ryan Blaney. I think Blaney's the guy. He was in position. I'm going to take his guy before he could take him. <laughs> he knew. He knew. Um, he knew. I, I actually, listen, I think Ryan Blaney did an amazing job of what he had to do as a Team Penske teammate in the Daytona 500. I think Austin Sindrick knows that very well right now. And if there's any chance Sindrick can return a push, he will be connected to Ryan Blaney's bumper. For that reason, I'm taking Blaney. So now who are you going to take? You, listen, yeah, now, now you took my guy. I talked him right into it. You see that? I talked him right into taking my it's guy. It's a good pick. It is a good pick. Um, look, Our, 
I, I'm not gonna no, I'm not, I'm not gonna double down. I'm not no, gonna you double. Can double down. No, 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 no. Yeah, I, I can. No, I thought that's what I'm shocked if you're not. You're right. I'm tripling down. I'm going right, <laughs> it, Like, look, look. He's been. They've been so close all year. Yeah. That it's time for them to get a win. And honestly, it's getting the way the season's rolling out. If you don't have a win, you you're really gonna be fighting hard. Like they got second. He's second in points. Well, by the points to chase, the three points apart. But if, if you don't have a win, you're really like getting down to 14, 15, and you're like, oh, I don't want to be out if we have a, you know, a hairy race. So uh, I'm going 12 because he's going to win, and then I'll be a rough, rough Monday morning for me. Mm. Rough morning, Monday morning for me next week. Mm. I'm going 12 plus 10, 22, Joe Logano. I have been picking him basically the whole entire show, so I'm going to go <laughs> Joey Logano. Sorry, guys. Wait, 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 wait. Team Penske will win a Talladega. Hold, hold on, hold saying. on. You picked, you picked the, the eight to beat the 14 because you thought the Chevys would push better, but mm -hmm. you're going to pick a four mm -hmm. to win the race. I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> it makes sense in my head. You know what doesn't make <laughs> sense? Racing at Talladega. We're going to see who has uh, the survive and advance luck mentality but can also put the skill on these super speedways and make the blocks and the pushes they need to. Uh, Steve, Mamba, always a pleasure. We'll see you in Talladega this weekend. Make sure and tune into the race. 3 p.m. Eastern, Sunday on Fox. Enjoy Talladega. We'll see you right back here next week in the back seat. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel for more clips, highlights, and full-length episodes. Also, check out NASCAR.com to stay up to date with all the latest news.